Dear students, this is Dr. N. Sri Vidya, Assistant Professor, Department of Management, JJ College of Arts and Science, Autonomous, Pudukotai. Now we shall see the last part of the first unit of Security Analysis and Portfolio Management, Risk and Risk Management. In this section, we shall see about definition of risk, types of risk, risk measurement and risk management. Definition of risk. Risk is the possibility or probability of loss or injury of the return being less than expected. Often treated as synonymous with uncertainty but it is different. Uncertainty is unknown risk but risk is known uncertainty. Its occurrence can be quantified or measured. So risk implies a previous awareness of possible losses. Uncertainty cannot be predicted. Types of risk. Risk can be classified into two, systematic risk and unsystematic risk. Systematic risk affects the whole market and originates from external factors, example bullish and bearish trends. A bull market is a market that is on the rise and where the economy is sound, while a bear market exists in an economy that is receding where most stocks are declining in value political and or social changes they are beyond the control of the corporate or the investor they are unavoidable and systematic risk is related to a particular industry or company they can be controlled by efficient management systematic risk is further classified into market risk, rate of interest risk and purchasing power risk. Market risk arises from stock price movements. Such movements are caused by tangible or intangible factors. Tangible factors include earthquakes or changes of government, coups, etc. Intangible factors are related to market psychology and are often manipulated. Interest rate risk is caused by changes in interest rate. Variable interest returns on bonds and securities create risk among investment avenues. RBI regulations of repo and reverse repo rates also affect risk perceptions. Purchasing power risk means factors like inflation, deflation or stagflation that affect investable amounts and risk perceptions. Inflation means money value decreases. Deflation means money value increases. Stagflation is persistent high inflation combined with high unemployment and stagnant demand in a country's economy. And systematic risk. And systematic risk arises from managerial inefficiency, technological changes in the production process, availability of raw materials, changes in consumer preferences or labor problems. Such risks are classified into business risk and financial risk. Business risk arises from internal or external factors. Internal factors include the introduction of new technology and consequent increase of cost, labor relations, fluctuations in sales and the nature of the product line. External factors of risk are social and regulatory factors, political risk and risk caused by fluctuations in the business cycle. Financial risk is associated with the capital structure of the company, the proportion of debt equity. Debt financing, otherwise known as financial leverage, has its effects on the equity shareholder. First of all, it increases the variability of returns on investment. It affects stockholder psychology since debt financing is seen as increase of risk. Risk measurement. Risk measurement 
is a matter of statistical quantification of risk using tools like standard deviation, beta, regression, etc. Standard deviation is a measure of the value of the variables around its mean or it is the square root of the sum of the stand square deviation from the mean divided by the number of observances. The arithmetic mean of the return may be same for two companies but the return may vary widely. So standard deviation as a measure of risk. The standard deviation is often used by investors to measure the risk of a stock or a stock portfolio. The basic idea is that the standard deviation is a measure of volatility. The more a stock's returns vary from the stock's average return, the more volatile is the stock. Standard deviation is a tool for assessing risk associated with a particular investment. Standard deviation measures the dispersion or variability around a mean or expected value and this is the formula for calculation of standard deviation. An example is given. Outcome 1, 2 and 3 given. Return for stock A and probability. Return for stock B and probability. The solution. So in the first column we have return, we write the return the return and the probability in the second column we have multiplied both in the third column and in the fourth column we have squared the first column and we have multiplied that with the second column so after applying formula for standard deviation we have got the answer as 1.41 rupees this is for stock a for stock b Again, the same y the return is given, probability is given, first and second columns multiplied in the third column and the th fourth column. First column is being squared and the probability is being multiplied with that. So, the same formula is applied here for stock B. The answer is 5.6 rupees. So when we see for stock A the expected return is 15 rupees and for the stock B 15 rupees standard deviation is 1.41 rupees for stock A and 5.66 rupees for stock B. Comparing the two stocks we see that both stocks have the same expected returns but the standard deviation or risk is different. The standard deviation of stock B is greater than standard deviation of stock A so stock B is riskier than stock A. Coefficient of variation is another tool. CV is a measure of relative risk. It tells us the risk associated with each unit of money invested. The formula is the standard deviation divided by expected return. Stock A has an expected return of rupees 15 and an expected variation of rupees 4. Stock B has an expected return of rupees 20 and an expected variation that is standard deviation of rupees 5. Which stock is riskier? This is an example. So when we see the expected value for stock A is 15, for stock B is 20, the standard deviation for stock A is 4. And the standard deviation for stock B is 5. When we apply the formula, we get the variation as 0 0.27 for stock A and 0 0.25 for stock B. So the um, covariance of stock B is 0 0.25 which means that against every rupee invested, there is a risk of 25 paisa since coefficient of variation for A is greater than coefficient of variation for B. So, stock A has more risk. 
so beta is another method another statistical tool for measuring risk so this is the formula rm is market risk and rf is risk free rate of return beta describes the relationship between the stock return and index return beta describes the systematic risk 1% change in the market index return causes exactly 1% change in stock return it indicates that the stock moves in tandem with the market 1% change in market index return causes exactly 0.5 change in stock return it indicates that the stock is less volatile compared to the market again third 1% change in market index return causes exactly 2% change in stock return it indicates that the stock is more volatile and there is a decline of 10% in the market return the stock will with beta 2 would give a negative return of 20% suppose the risk free rate of return is 6% the market rate is 12% and the beta is 1.25 then the required rate of return for the security would be 6 plus 12 minus 6 into 1.25 will get 13.5 percentage reconsider the above example but suppose that the value of b is 1.60 then the return would be so when we apply the same formula we will get 15.6 percentage so we see that greater the value of beta the greater the systematic risk and in turn the greater the required rate of return so how we can manage the risk how to minimize the risk risk can be avoided by risk analysis and careful planning risk protection may be considered as the avoidance of all types of risks protection from market risk is done through a close study of the price behavior of the stock and through statistical calculations of standard deviation and regression it is also done by manipulation of purchases and sales of stock protection against interest rate risk is ensured by holding the investment to maturity preferring short term bonds or staggered investments in bonds with different maturity dates Inflation is guarded against by preferring bonds or debentures with fixed returns, investing in short-term securities, diversifying one's investments. Business and financial risk are avoided by analyzing the strength and weakness of the sector to which the company belongs, analyzing profitability trends and looking through company reports for various criteria like capital structure, expenditure pattern, working capital and inventory management etc so in this section we have seen about risk management the first unit is over